And you, you can have your main event of the evening. Hello and welcome to These Days Are Hours, a Happy Days podcast. I'm Peter. And I'm Joe. And today we are discussing Season 8, Episode 14. Hello, Mrs. Arcola. Or Chachi's House. (laughs) Okay, Peter, tell us what happens in Hello, Mrs. Arcola or Chachi's House. We open with Joni and Chachi at Arnold's discussing possible movies to see. Hey, we can go see the blog. Is it any good? Fonzie comes in with Potsy who is testing the extent of his finger-snapping powers so Potsy can write a paper on it. I'm either going to call it exceptional extrasensory attraction capabilities of homo sapiens <laughs> or how to pick up girls. Instead of a movie, Joni suggests Chachi come over to her place to watch TV, but Howard doesn't want Chachi to come over so much. Joni suggests she come over to Chachi's place, but he claims his TV is broken. A lie Joni instantly sees through. You said you watched the basketball game last night. Look, Joni, I just want to see a movie, all right? Well, why can't is that all right with you? They're about to argue when Jenny shows up to observe. Joni points out that she and Chachi have been dating for a year, and Joni has never been to Chachi's home or met Chachi's mother. You have never introduced her to your mother. Jenny says that's normal. She and Eugene have been dating for a while, and she has yet to introduce him to her parents because she's ashamed of him. Chachi makes Jenny leave, and Joni tearfully asks if Chachi's ashamed of her. He claims he's not. He's out in public with her, isn't he? And he hasn't asked her to wear a bag on her head, right? Joni promptly ends their relationship and leaves. Joni, wait. Yeah? This is yours. I never gave you a ring. (laughs) That night at the Cunningham house, Joni discusses the breakup with Fonzie over Chachi not introducing her to his mother. Fonzie promises to take care of it. I got a cousin who don't take the benefit of knowing me in person. Where is that Fonzie really finesse? No idea. The next day at the Arcola residence, Chachi helps his uncle Gonzo find his cleats. Gonzo claims to have a big game today. President Coolidge will be there, and he goes up to the roof of the building. Fonzie shows up and tells Chachi he invited Joni, Howard, and Marion to dinner here tomorrow night. Chachi claims his mother, Fonzie's aunt Luisa, is having surgery tonight, then changes it to a bridge game. A bridge party made up of some of her friends who've had surgery. That's why I got confused. (laughs) Just then, Luisa enters, having just gotten back from Potsy's apartment as Cheese's landlady. Poxy Weber called me downstairs to his apartment to help him fix his garbage disposal. I explained to him he doesn't have a garbage disposal. <laughs> she confirms that she's not busy, and she's delighted to hear the Cunninghams are coming to dinner. Josh's not enthused to have the Cunninghams over to meet his mother talking about fixing garbage disposals, or his uncle talking about Newt Rockney. Fonzie calls him out for being ashamed of his mother and uncle, and Chachi protests that the Cunninghams have a perfect father-knows-best life. Fonzie isn't happy with Chachi. You're not really ashamed of Joni, are you? It's just your mother, where you live, your no. family. It's great and insists everything will be fine as long as Chachi doesn't blow it. The next night, as Luisa is making dinner and getting ready, Chachi worries her spaghetti sauce will be too spicy for the Cunninghams, and also worries about his only owning one suit, and also worries about the mismatched chairs and dinnerware. Nothing matches! Nice variety, huh? Nice! It looks like the back room of a pawn shop! They'll think they're having dinner at a garage sale! On the bright side, Chachi sent Gonzo out to the movies tonight, and then his uncle immediately shows up, having spent all the money Chachi gave him on walnuts. What's a movie without walnuts, huh? Chachi gives him more money and sends him out. The doorbell buzzes, and in come Joni, Howard, and Marion. Greetings are exchanged, and Louisa remarks on her late husband's alcoholism and kissing ability. And just when Chachi's father, rest his soul, used to come in, the first thing he'd say was, Hey, Louisa, where's the sauce? (laughs) Ah, the man had no manners. But boy, could he kiss you. (laughs) Dinner begins, and while the Cunninghams are complimentary of Luisa's cooking, Marion starts to have an allergic reaction to the cayenne pepper in the sauce. She gulps down water and flees into the bathroom. Oh, Howard, you just go back and sit down. Hey, don't you want me to come with you? Trust me, dear, this is an experience we can't share. (laughs) Gonzo returns and immediately enlists Howard to play football with him. Luisa explains Gonzo used to play professionally, and never once did he wear a helmet. Gonzo tackles Howard onto the couch. All right, here, take the ball, I'll tackle you. Right, right, right back. Oh, 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 After dinner, Gonzo has gone onto the roof, and Joni is helping clean up his walnut shells. Chachi asks if she understands now why he didn't want her to come to his house, but she doesn't. Marion comes out of the bathroom, apologetic over ruining dinner. Howard is taking Gonzo in stride. He fixed Howard's back. They insist Luisa and Chachi and Gonzo come over for dinner in the future. Alone, Chachi is still upset about the night, but Joni insists everyone had a wonderful time and it all worked out. All I care about is you. 
She leaves, and Louisa returns, and Chachi tells his mother he loves her. The next night, Chachi is watching Beat the Clock with the Cunninghams. If the guy breaks all those water balloons in 10 seconds, he wins the luggage. And Fonzie comes home with walnuts for everyone. Thank you, Peter. That was Hello, Mrs. Arcola. It first aired back on February 24th, 1981. This was a very busy night for television. Happy Days was followed by a new Laverne and Shirley in which the girls get stoned on marijuana brownies and almost marry two British musicians. Oh like my the- God, that sounds amazing. And they're played by Peter Noon of Herman's Hermits and Eric Idle of Monty Python. I love these California beds. <laughs> you called us birds. Hey, why don't you get us two TP tacos and a couple of them coyote soldies? Please. Two tacos, two sodies! CBS had a new episode of That's My Line featuring the world's greatest butler, a lingerie party for ladies only, an interview with the amazing Randy, and a visit with a lady who started a theater for handicapped children. And NBC had a new episode of Lobo, in which comedy legend Sid Caesar guest stars as a mad bomber who claims that his love for America is the reason for his crimes. Also, Chief Carson is held hostage by a mother whose baby is a robbery suspect. So, Peter, of those three choices, what are you watching? I want to see the baby hostage one. Oh, my God. I was very intrigued by that Lobo plot summary. I couldn't believe it myself. Obviously, how could a baby be a robbery suspect? And then you have Sid Caesar as a mad bomber. I'm sold. Hello, Mrs. Arcola was directed by Jerry Paris, and it was written by the team of William Bickley and Michael Warren. The most recent of their episodes that we covered was Hello, Roger. Their future episodes include Hello, Tough Guy and Hello, Fisters. So maybe you can see a pattern in their episodes. As for guest stars this week, well, we have a new semi-regular alert. Ellen Travolta joins the show as Louisa Arcola, Chachi's mom. Managing an apartment building is not all glamour. This is the first of her five appearances on Happy Days as Louisa, a character she also played in the spinoff Joni Loves Chachi. The older sister of John Travolta, Ellen is an actress from Englewood, New Jersey, who has been appearing in TV shows and films since the mid-1970s. Before this, she played a very similar character on another Gary Marshall sitcom, Making It. I know your father will get me something real exciting for my birthday yeah like an extension cord she also had a recurring role as Horshack's mom on Welcome Back, Cotter, plus guest parts on All in the Family, What's Happening, One Day at a Time, Ships, The Love Boat, and Different Strokes. After Happy Days, Ellen went on to play Scott Bayo's mother again on Charles in Charge. She also appeared on General Hospital, The Single Guy, Murder, She Wrote, and Judging Amy. Ellen's movies include Grease and Lonely Hearts. So, Peter, what did you think of Ellen Travolta as Louisa Arcola? I really loved her performance as Louisa Arcola. I think that was the highlight of the episode for me. She just gives off this very warm, engaging vibe. She seems like the kind of person that would be really enjoyable to spend an afternoon with. She's vivacious. She's friendly. She makes really spicy spaghetti sauce. And I liked her a lot, even if she is a landlady. And even if she is responsible for giving the world chachi. Ellen Travolta is the best part of this episode. I can 100% understand why Gary Marshall hired her again after making it to play pretty much the same character here. She comes across as so genuine and so loving and you can completely imagine her as a single mom trying to raise this teenage son and manage this apartment building. So I think Ellen plays this part perfectly and is so charming and so likable. I'm really glad she's here because she really elevates this episode. We also have J.J. Barry as Uncle Gonzo. Gonzo the Great! J.J. was a New York actor who worked in film and TV from the late 60s to the early 90s. By the time he did Happy Days, J.J. had already been a regular on Laugh-In and The Corner Bar. He'd also made guest appearances on The Bob Newhart Show, Alice and Three's Company. He made multiple appearances on Barney Miller both before and after this episode of Happy Days. After playing Uncle Gonzo, J.J. guested on Soap, Booze and Buddies, Webster, Hill Street Blues, Night Court, and Math Net. His films include This Is Spinal Tap, History of the World Part 1, and a couple of Richard Pryor movies, JoJo dancer your life is calling and moving unfortunately jj died in 1990 at the age of 58 so peter what did you think of jj barry as uncle gonzo i'm torn between this episode plays his genuine disability for laughs and it's kind of uncomfortable and liking the fact that pretty much everyone takes it in stride like they're not judgmental or cruel towards him except for chachi because he's the worst so there's that i thought it was a solid enough performance and it accomplished what was being called 
called for. JJ plays the part pretty well. I think the part is written in a very exaggerated, cartoony way that I don't think meshes with the tone of the rest of the episode. I can understand why they didn't bring Uncle Gonzo back for future episodes. He doesn't seem to be a part of Chachi's household after this episode. How can you have this person in the show on a regular basis? Again, J.J. Barry is a very accomplished comedic character actor, and he plays the part very well. I don't know that he really fits into this episode, though. Yeah, they went a little bit too far with the, okay, we need to give Chachi an embarrassing uncle of some kind. He's written in such a bizarre way, because the rest of the show is about real-life concerns. Am I embarrassed of my own family? Am I comfortable having my girlfriend and her family visit us? Those are real life issues and then you have this character who's written in a very unreal kind of way and it clashes with the rest of the episode all respect to jj barry i think he plays the part pretty funny and if this were a sketch comedy show i think that part would actually fit in a little bit better as for songs this week the only one i heard was surf city by jan and dean from 1963 played that song quite a lot already this season. As for cultural and historical references, Joni and Chachi are debating whether or not to see The Blob. They've had about five years to think about it since The Blob was released in 1958, and this story is taking place in 1963. Of course, The Blob is the classic sci-fi horror film in which a strange gelatinous life form arrives on Earth from outer space by meteor and becomes larger and larger as it consumes human beings. It's about a big ball of icky, icky, icky. <laughs> It's disgusting. Steve McQueen plays a young man who must rally the local teenagers to fight both the blob and the prejudice of adults. Al warns Joni and Chachi not to see Psycho. This film, Alfred Hitchcock's adaptation of a Robert Block novel about a murderous motel owner, would already have been three years old since it was released in 1960, not to mention the fact that the Cunninghams already saw Psycho in season three. Nevertheless, the film is famous for a scene in which leading lady Janet Lee is killed in a shower. The scene reportedly caused some viewers, especially young ones, to fear showers in real life. Clarence saw it. He hasn't taken a shower since. (laughs) And this whole scene about the blob and Psycho made me realize that a lot of times Happy Days treats the past as just one big amorphous blob of time. 100%. They are just kind of throwing everything from the past into a big pot and making a delicious, confusing goulash. Fonzie says Norman Rockwell would put Joni and Chachi on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post. Born in New York in 1894, Norman Rockwell was a painter and illustrator who became famous for his quaint depictions of everyday American life. His work appeared in the Saturday Evening Post for nearly 50 years. And of course, every Saturday evening, I bring out the mag. The what? Magazine. Oh. Uh Oh, that reminds me, uh, that artist I sent by to... Do you look at this stuff? You mean the Rockwell boy? Skinny kid with the pipe? Yeah, that's a kid. Yeah, I glanced at it, and he's too far out for me. Oh, yeah. Well, I know you got to play it safe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Rockwell died in 1978, just three years before this episode aired. And yes, Rockwell occasionally depicted malt shops in his paintings, like Soda Jerk and After the Prom. Fonzie says that Louis Pasteur invented milk. Pasteur was a 19th century French microbiologist who devoted his life to preventing the spread of diseases. One of his techniques involved exposing certain foods and beverages, including milk, to mild heat in order to eliminate pathogens. This process is known as pasteurization. Jenny says, nice going, Romeo. She is sarcastically referring to the tragic young hero of William Shakespeare's 1597 play Romeo and Juliet, which has become one of his most performed and adapted works. In particular, the name Romeo has become a generic term for lover. Uncle Gonzo says that President Coolidge is going to be at his football game. Calvin Coolidge took office in 1923 following the sudden death of Warren G. Harding. Just hit the east side of the LBC on a mission trying to find Mr. Warren G. Coolidge was then elected on his own in 1924 and served until 1929 when he was succeeded by Herbert Hoover. Known as Silent Cal, Coolidge served during the economic boom known as the Roaring Twenties. Coolidge died in 1933 at the age of 60. Chachi says 
says that Uncle Gonzo is waiting for Newt Rockney. Newt was a Norwegian-born football coach who had an incredibly successful career at Notre Dame from 1918 to 1930. It all came to a sudden end with his death in a plane crash in 1931. Even that didn't stop him from becoming possibly the most famous football coach in American history. Chachi worries that Uncle Gonzo will say, I gotta win one for the Gipper. He's referring to George Gipp, who played at Notre Dame for Coach Newt Rockney, but died of pneumonia in 1925, just three weeks after a victory over Northwestern. In the 1940 biopic, Newt Rockney All-American, starring Pat O'Brien in the title role, a young Ronald Reagan played George Gipp. That film contains the famous quote, win just one for the Gipper. Someday when the team's up against it, the brakes are beating the boys. Ask them to go in there with all they've got. Win just one for the Gipper. The nickname Gipper and that aforementioned quote followed Ronald Reagan into his political career. So you can already see the effect that recent headlines were having on Happy Days. Yep. Uh, Chachi says that the Cunninghams are like Father Knows Best. This wholesome sitcom about an insurance salesman and his family debuted on radio in 1949. The TV version debuted in 1954 and ran for six seasons. Robert Young played the lead on both radio and television. Robert Young and Jane White. With Eleanor Donahue, Billy Gray, and Lauren Chapin in Father Knows Best. You ever watch any Father Knows Best? I have not. It's, it's one of those things that like, everyone knows about it, but I feel like very few people today have actually just sat down and watched it. I have watched some of Father Knows Best. It is a very, very dull show. Uh... <laughs> Chachi tells Uncle Gonzo that a Roadrunner cartoon is playing at the movies. By 1963, animated theatrical shorts were on their way out, and Warner Brothers' entire animation department was dying. But the Roadrunner series, created in 1949 by Chuck Jones, managed to survive until 1966 because these cartoons were relatively cheap and easy to produce. Hooray! Meep, meep. Soup's on is a well-known expression, meaning simply that a meal is ready. It's odd that Howard is unfamiliar with this idiom since it was in common parlance by 1963. Donald Duck had even starred in a 1948 cartoon called Soup's on. Were you familiar with that expression, Soup's on? Yes, I was, because I'm a normal human being, Howard. Yeah, Marion says that she's allergic to cayenne, a mildly spicy pepper commonly used in cuisine around the world, especially in its dried powder form. Such an allergy would be rare, but cayenne may cause digestive issues for those with GERD or IBS. If Marion were actually allergic to cayenne, she might break out in hives or have difficulty breathing. So what I'm saying here is that Marion is not actually allergic to cayenne. It's just making her need to use the bathroom, to put it gently. She probably has a digestive issue like GERD or IBS, so I don't want to dwell on that, but that's kind of... <laughs> That's kind of what the episode is about. And I was really surprised that they went that direction with the humor, but they did. Uncle Gonzo played football with the Canton Bulldogs. I thought this might have been a college team, but it was actually an early professional football team based out of Canton, Ohio. The Bulldogs were founded in 1903 before the National Football League even existed. The team finally folded in 1927. While they were not the first professional football team, the Bulldogs are considered one of the first famous pro squads. Much of the fame deservedly came as a result of the team's winning ways. The Bulldogs were a powerhouse in the pre-NFL days and gained great notoriety because of one particular star player, the legendary Jim Thorpe. The reason the Football Hall of Fame is in Canton is the Canton Bulldogs dominated the sport in its early days. The Arcolas have a vintage Budweiser clock hanging over their couch. These lighted clocks were mainly used in bars as advertisements. I couldn't find an exact date on when they were made, but the ones on eBay seem to be from the 1980s. Chachi Howard, Marion, and Joni watched Beat the Clock. This was a game show hosted by Bud Collier from 1950 to 1958. Hi, I'm Bud Collier, and these are just a typical assortment of the many props contestants work with on Beat the clock. We give them a lot of very simple things to do. Anyone can do them. You take this poker chip, for example. You just have to place it on your forehead like this, wriggle your face, and then catch it in your teeth. It's been revived numerous times since then, most recently in 2018. Contestants are asked to complete silly and contrived challenges within a strict time limit. The game show was heavily referenced in Chachi's Incredo Wax back in season six. Other observations this week. Jenny Piccolo is still dating Eugene. In what universe, Peter? At least she's ashamed of him. At least she's not proud of the fact that this is what she has been reduced to. Howard's chair is back this week. I was very happy to see it. And Fonzie even jumps into it. Go fetch the man of the year, a goddamn chair. Just once, I'd like to see him jump into the chair, only to discover that the chair is gone that week. <laughs> 
Uncle Gonzo apparently suffered head injuries from playing football, and that's why he acts so strangely. Today, we'd call his condition CTE, or Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. If so, this would make Happy Days one of the first sitcoms to depict what would eventually become a very serious issue. I cannot say this with any authority, but I do feel like that for most of my life, there has been this kind of acknowledgement of the fact that football can mess up your brain, and that's why you need to wear a helmet. But this must have been one of the first sitcoms that really made a character out of it and dealt with it for most of an episode. It felt very early to me for this. And last for me, this is one of the rare episodes of Happy Days in which the Cunningham's waspiness is a plot point. I don't really think of them as reserved and waspy and upper middle class, but that's how they're depicted here. There was an episode earlier on where Howard wanted to join a country club and kind of a recurring thing is that they're solidly middle class, but that's somewhat precarious. Remember the episode where Fonzie moved in and the reason why they needed to do that was because they were going broke. I think it's kind of interesting to think of it in comparison to the very aggressively Italian-American Arcola Fonzarelli family. They are pretty waspy, but also if you just take them on their own, there are waspier families. So, Peter, were there any outstanding Happy Days fashions in this episode? I really liked the striped shirt that Jenny was wearing in the opening scene. It felt very 60s in a way that also felt very 80s, if that makes sense. And I also really liked the red dress that Louisa was wearing during the dinner. It was very pretty. So, Peter, I will ask that age-old timeless question, was this episode any good? I think this was a pretty solid episode about realizing that despite the fact that you are embarrassed regarding your class position in comparison to your more affluent peers and that there's nothing to be ashamed of, but I feel like it's dragged down by the fact that like I fucking hate Chachi and a lot of this episode comes across as him being embarrassed of his awesome mother. You just mentioned what was my pet peeve with this episode and it is Chachi's behavior through the whole thing. His treatment of Joni at the beginning is horrible. His treatment of his family is horrible. Telling Joni that no I'm not ashamed of you. It's not like I'm making you wear a bag on your head when we go out together. Oh my god you are the worst. I thought that was such a stupid and hateful thing to say. And we're supposed to be rooting for him as the young romantic hero in this story. The rest of the episode is actually pretty good. This is kind of an interesting story about the more prosperous Cunninghams going for an awkward dinner with the working class Arcolas is kind of an interesting idea for a story. Ellen Travolta gives a very good performance. I think Aaron Moran as Joni is quite good through this whole episode. The one thing that derails it for me is the way that Chachi is written. You ungrateful little brat. You have a great mom who's working her ass off to support you. Your uncle has a genuine medical condition, so maybe extend some grace towards him, you dick. And you have a really nice girlfriend with a really nice family. Maybe be grateful for all of this stuff instead of being such an ungrateful little twerp through this whole thing. That's kind of acknowledged with Fonzie. He straight up calls out Chachi for being the worst, considering the fact that Fonzie himself is not entirely consistent what his upbringing is. He's claimed that he's been on his own since he was six. He may or may not have been raised by his grandmother, and I'm not sure what role Louisa played in his upbringing, if any, but family is very important to him, and it's important to him to have respect for your elders. You also pointed out one of my favorite scenes in this episode, which is when Fonzie gives Chachi a reality check in the middle of the story here, and does sort of get through to Chachi, but it doesn't take even then, because it takes another scene with Joni near the end of the episode for Chachi to realize that the evening wasn't a disaster. Hello, Mrs. Arcola is actually entertaining to watch. I think there's some good scenes and some good performances. I would recommend that people watch it. I would just say that I hated the way Chachi was written in this thing, and it was a flaw in the episode for me. So, Peter, how can people keep up with us and find out about all the wonderful things we are doing? Listeners can follow us on Twitter at Fonzie Podcast. They can follow me on Twitter at Peter Volfranc. That's P-E-T-E-R-V-U-L-F-R-A-N-C. And they can follow me on Twitter at Joe underscore A underscore Blevins. They can find this podcast online at Bees days are ours.libs and com and they can email us with questions comments and concerns at these days are ours podcast at gmail.com so peter what do we have on the docket for next week next week fonzie gets shot oh it got me pal. that is the title of the episode i'm already excited for it so see you later alligator in a while crocodile when you say up you tell the world you know what makes it all the way Say but you say you care enough to only want the king of beers. There is no other one. There's only something less. Because the king of beers is leading all the rest. When you 
What's a movie without walnuts, huh?